fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One, two, Let's go, big fellow. Hey, oh, Silver. Hey! Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, was riding the stagecoach from Rockton to Belknap, returning from a visit with friends. The only other passenger in the coach with Dan was a young woman whose beauty and pleasant smile attracted Dan's attention. As their eyes met, the girl spoke. You're rather young to be traveling around the West alone, aren't you? Oh, no, ma'am. I was born out here, and I know the country quite well. Oh, I see. I think we ought to know each other's names, don't you? I'm Betty Rollins from Chicago. My name's Dan Reed. For the present, I'm living just outside of Belknap. Belknap? Well, that's where I get off the stage. This is my first time, West, and I'm quite excited about it. I like the West. Uh, I've never been to Chicago, but I have been to St. Louis. I think I'm going to like the West, too. Are you going to stay out here, Miss Rollins? Well, yes, I think so, Dan. You see, my uncle died and left a large ranch to my cousin and me. A cousin I've never met. His name was Jack Owens of the Star Ranch. Oh. Jack lived there with my uncle. I don't know Jack Owens, but I have heard of the Star Ranch. It's quite a big one. So I've been told. <laughs> oh, I've got a lot to learn about yeah, ranching day. <laughs> In fact, I've done very little horseback riding. I like to ride. I have a horse of my own called Victor. He's a beauty. How wonderful. I'd like to see your horse someday. Will you bring him out to the ranch and show him to me? Golly, I... I'd be glad to, Miss Rollins. Good. Then we'll consider that as a definite appointment. Why don't you come out someday this week? All right. I'll come out tomorrow if it's all right with you. Fine. I'll be looking for you and Victor tomorrow. Later that day, Jack Owens, Betty Rollins' cousin, was driving the Star Ranch buckboard to town to meet the stage from the east. The foreman of the ranch was riding on the seat beside Jack. Well, Jack, I wonder what your new ranching partner is going to be like. I'm wondering myself, Tex. I've never met my cousin Betty. Too bad the old man went and left half of the ranch to that girl after the way you've worked to help make it so successful. Yeah, I know. But Uncle Bob always did have a soft spot in his heart for cousin Betty. Jack, didn't your uncle's will say something to the effect that if anything happened to either one of you... The other one was to get all of the ranch. Uh-huh. The will did say that. Why? Oh, I was just thinking. The Star Ranch really ought to belong just to you, Jack. Look, just forget that kind of thinking, Tex. If 
anything happened to Cousin Betty, the first one the law would grab would be me. Not if it was proved to be an accident. In front of witnesses, for instance. Look, Tex, right now that kind of talk makes me nervous. She isn't even here yet. Well, it's worth thinking about, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. We better hurry. The stage is probably in town already. Get up there. Get up. The stagecoach arrived in Belknap before Jack Owens got there. Betty Rollins stood with Dan Reed in front of the stagecoach station, waiting. I hope they got my letter saying I was to arrive today. Well, the ranch is quite a ways from town. Maybe they're just a little late in getting here. <laughs> yes, I guess so. Uh, tell me, Dan, what could I buy as a present for my cousin while I'm waiting? Is there a shop around here where I might get something in a hurry? Oh, yes. Right up the street there, see? Oh. That's a saddle and leather goods shop. Well, come on with me. Right. Oh, I should have brought something from Chicago, but I just didn't think of it. Well, here we are. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, I want to get a gift for a man, a rancher. Something especially nice. Well, now, let me see. Say, I know just the thing right back here. Oh. Here's something special, ma'am. Spurs? Well, the, I don't the know. They're handmade of Mexican silver. Here, you look them over. Well, they are unusual looking. That's right. Uh, what do you think, Dan? Oh, they'd make a very nice present. Well, I... Oh, Dan, look here. On the side of each spur. Well, there's a star carved out of the silver. What? Well, since we have a star They'll ranch... They'll be very but... nice. You can have them for only $15, ma'am. All right, I'll take them. Here, here's the money. Here, thanks, ma'am. I'll wrap them up for you. See, I just saw the Star Ranch Buckford go by, Miss Rollins. Oh, well, then Cousin Jack has come for me. Uh, you needn't wrap the spurs. I'll take them just as they are. All right. Uh, come along, Dan. I don't want to keep my cousin waiting. After taking Betty to the buckboard, Dan went to the livery stable and got his own horse, Victor. Then he rode out into the hills to the camp which he shared with Toto and the Lone Ranger. Dan told about Betty Rollins. Golly, she's awfully nice and pretty, too, sir. (laughs) I guess she must be if you say so, Dan. You say she came out here to take over her share of the Star Ranch? Yes, sir. She owns half of it. Her cousin, Jack Owens, has the other half. Mm. I saw him today for a few minutes when Miss Rollins got in the buckboard. Me see Jack Owens round town, Kimasabi. Oh? Him tall, blonde fella. Well, that's right, Tano. Well, what do you think of him, Dan? Well, I... I don't like him very well, sir. He didn't even thank Miss Rollins for the spurs she bought him. She, he just took them, looked at them, and said, Oh, that's all. I could see she was disappointed after thinking to buy them for him. Yes, it was a nice gesture on her part. It was a coincidence that she should find a pair with a star carved on the side. Ah, that fit in nice with Neymar Ranch. Oh, that's the reason she bought those spurs. Because of the star on each of them. I see. Is she going to help run the star ranch then? Well, she said she didn't know anything about ranching and that she couldn't even ride a horse very well. But she does want to stay in the West. She'll have to depend on her cousin, Jack Owens, to run things until she learns. I uh, suppose he's honest enough. Gosh, I hope so. No, I'm going out to the star spread to see Miss Rollins tomorrow. She wants to get a look at Victor. That plenty big ranch. Them have plenty fine cattle. Yes, that's right, Tonto. Well, it's time to prepare supper. <clears throat> Tomorrow when you get back from the ranch, you can tell us all about it, Dan. The following day, Dan mounted Victor and rode to the Star Ranch. He reined up in front of the ranch house. Oh, ho, Victor, ho, boy. Easy, boy, steady. I heard you ride up. Hello, Miss Rollins. Oh, what a beautiful horse. He's absolutely magnificent. Gee, I'm glad you like Victor. Oh, I do very much. I bet you're very proud to own him, aren't you? Yes, sir. Oh, I'd love to ride him someday. May I? Oh, sure. Look, why don't you ride him right now? Just go out to the trail and back. Oh, but, Dan, I've ridden so little. I... Oh, Victor will be gentle with you, won't you, fella? <laughs> oh, he acts as though he understands just what you say. Oh, he does, Miss Rollins. I'm sure he does. Do you want to ride him out there and back? Well, all right. I'll help you him out. 
steady, Victor. Easy, boy. There. I won't go very far. Wait for me on the porch, Dan. All right. Get up, Victor. As Betty rode away on Victor, Dan turned and walked to the porch. He sat on the lower step and watched as Victor carried the girl out toward the ranch entrance. As he sat there, Dan heard the back door slam. Then he heard voices in the living room of the ranch house. Hey, isn't that my cousin riding away from the ranch? Yeah. What was she got that white horse? Must be one of ours. Can't tell from here. Guess she had one of the boys bring it around. <laughs> She's not much of a rider. <laughs> Rides like a tenderfoot, all right. See, hey, you thought of what we were talking about in the way of town yesterday? Yeah. I did give it some thought, Tex. Well, what about it? Like I gotta tell you, I may have way it could be done, so it'd be like an accident. They'd have plenty of witnesses, too. I'll still have to think it over a while. First chance we have, we'll get together where we won't be interrupted. Then you can tell me what it is you got in mind. Yeah, we better get together soon, then. Because what I have in mind has to do with a cattle drive next week. I wonder what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I see you're wearing them spurs your cousin bought you. Sure, why not? They're mighty nice spurs when you come right down to it. Yeah, they are, there. The strap bug on one of them's about to come off, though. Have to get it fixed first time I'm in town. Go on, we got work to do over in the North Range. Golly, sounds like those two are planning something dishonest. Miss Rollins wouldn't want anything like that around this ranch. When I get back, I'll tell Tano and the Lone Ranger what I overheard. That night, as they sat around the campfire, Dan remembered to tell Tonto and the Lone Ranger what he had heard Jack and the foreman saying in the ranch house. You say they said something was going to be fixed, so it looked like an accident, Dan? Yes, sir. That's what I heard the foreman say to Jack Owens. They didn't know I was sitting on the porch step. Maybe I shouldn't have listened, Oh, it was but... the nature of the conversation that attracted your attention, Dan. Not right. If them planning something crooked, it good you hear, Dan. I wish they had said what it was they were planning to do. Anyway, whatever it is, it's supposed to happen next week during a cattle drive. I guess the Star Ranch is having their cattle drive at that time. They'll probably drive about a thousand head from the ranch to the loading yard in Belknap. And that's right. No telling what they might be planning. I wonder if it... Otto, there's something I want you to do in the morning in town. Ah? Uh, and what that came of I'll tell you when you're ready to go. There's something I want you to find out for me. The answer may put a different light on this whole matter. following morning, leaving Dan at the camp, the Lone Ranger rode with Tonto to the edge of town. He waited while the Indian went to a certain office in Belknap. After a short time, Tonto returned to the place where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Well, Tonto, it didn't take you very long. Not right. Me go to land office like you say, Kimasabi. Oh, what did you find out? Well, them say Jack Owens own half Star Ranch, girl own other half. The main thing I wanted to know was well, about... Well, me know, Kimasabi. Me find out something else. Well? Well, man tell me, according to Will, old uncle who die, yes. all ranch go to one who's left if something happened to Owen, a girl. I suspected as much. I mean, not savvy what It you... struck me last night, Toto, that Jack Owens and that foreman at the Star Ranch could be planning something far worse than we thought at first. What do you mean? Well, according to what Dan heard... Something is being planned to happen during the cattle drive. That right? That something is to look like an accident. Ah, that's what Dan tell us. Toto, I have a feeling that those two aren't just planning to do something crooked. I believe they're planning something far worse, as I said before. In other words, it might be that they're planning the murder of Betty Rollins. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. After Tonto had learned that the will of Betty's uncle stipulated that if one of the partners died, the whole ranch should go to the other, the Lone Ranger told his Indian friend the conclusions to which he had come regarding what Dan had overheard. Tonto was impressed by the Lone Ranger's ominous words. He must savvy that not good. Maybe it better we warn girl about cousin. Now, wait a minute, Tonto. Remember, I'm only assuming that such a thing is possible. I'm not saying that Owens and the foreman are actually making such plans. I could be wrong, you know. Mm. Then what you do? It would be unwise to worry the girl needlessly. What we can do is to be on hand when that cattle drive takes place, just to be sure nothing does happen to her. Ah, that good plan. We'll go back to camp now, Tonto. When that drive starts, we'll be nearby, watching. Easy, sir. Go on, easy, minute. All right, let's go. Uh, be ready. On to the Come. Come. The following week passed uneventfully. Dan kept in touch with Miss Rollins and found out the exact day that the drive was to take place. Early that morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto set out from their camp and rode to the hilly rangeland of the Star Ranch. We rounded up most of the cattle on the North Range, Tonto. They'll drive them down the valley over there. Ah, uh, that right. They'll enter the valley to the north and come out between the ridges right over there. Keep out of sight as we follow the progress of the drive. Girl, tell Dan, cousin want to go on cattle drive. I know. That's suspicious as itself. She's not used to riding. And what's more, a tenderfoot has no business helping on a cattle drive. Especially a girl. That's right. We'll look for Miss Rollins. When we spot her, we'll make sure she doesn't get out of our sight. Well, we better hurry a bit. The drive has probably started by now. Oh, to get him off his car. Meantime, Jack Owens and the foreman rode with Betty Rollins from the ranch house. As they approached the place where the cowpokes were moving the cattle into the valley, Betty's eyes shone with suppressed excitement. Well, Betty, there they are. Isn't that a sight? Oh, it certainly is. And to think we own all those cattle. I can hardly believe it. Sure is a fine herd, miss. Them cattle bring a big price. How many are there, do you know? Yep, nigh on to 2,000 head. All fat and ready for market. Oh, who there? Oh, who? Oh, steady. Well, Betty, here's where I have to leave you. You stick along with Tex. And be sure you don't get too close to that herd. Sometimes they run a little wild. You never can count on them. We'll ride along the ridge down to the point where they leave the valley. Miss Rollins can get a good view of the drive as they move through the valley. All right. You can join up with us there, Tex. I'll be seeing you later. Get up there. Oh, my, this is exciting to watch. I guess it is for somebody who's never seen a cattle drive before. Them critters get awful ornery at times. Sure keeps the cow hands busy getting them to move down the valley. I'm going to like ranching. And I hope to learn enough so that I can be of help later on. Oh, no hurry about that. We can handle things pretty well. Well, we better get going. Get up there. Get, get up. up. Gradually, the herd moved down to the narrow exit. While the cattle was still a short distance from the point where they were to leave the valley... Tex and Betty reached the exit on the left side and reined up. Oh, fellow, oh. Well, there they come. In a couple of minutes, the cat will reach you and leave that valley. I'm joining the boys on this side, so I'll be leaving you, Miss Robin. You've been very helpful, Tex. Thanks a lot. I wish there was something I could do to help with the drive. I feel so useless. Well, now, Miss Rollins, I was just going to suggest something you could do to help. Well, of course. What is it, Tex? Well, them cattle are moving mighty slow, as you can see. That gives you plenty of time to ride across the other side from here and give the men a message for me. That is, if you're not afraid. Well, I... Well, if you think there's plenty of time, I guess I can do it for you. Good for you. You won't have to worry. As I said, the cattle are moving slow. But just ride over and tell the first cowpoke you see that I want them to swing the herd to the left before they reach the river. Otherwise, we'll have trouble. All right, I'll tell them. Get up there. Meantime, near the exit from the valley on the opposite side and keeping well out of sight, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the figures of Tex and the girl across from them. So far, Tonto, everything's gone all right. 
Guess the girl's going to watch the drive from there. She and the foreman have stopped. Ah. Me wonder something, Kimosami. What? Me wonder why foreman ride with girl. Why him not help cowhands with cattle drive? I thought of that. It may be that she asked him to go... Oh, look. The girl has started to cross the valley opening in front of the cattle. Ah. They're coming alone. They have plenty of time. Cattle not moving fast. I know. Still, it's a bit risky. Something could happen. Somebody's shooting from the side of the hill on this side. Kimosabi, look. Cattle stampeding. Girl right in path. That girl will be trampled to death. Front hill Realizing that every second counted, the Lone Ranger, disregarding the extreme danger to himself and his horse, started at a gallop toward the fear-stricken girl. The great-hearted Silver never hesitated an instant to obey the ringing cry that had urged him into the face of the thundering herd, which was fast approaching the spot where Betty Rollins was trying to urge her horse into a faster gait. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger heard her scream again, more terrifying than the last. She's been thrown. Her horse has left her. Faster, Silver! Faster! Ever closer came the fear-ridden herd, yet the masked man and the gallant stallion gave no thought of swerving from their purpose. As he neared Betty, the Lone Ranger cried out to her. Get to your feet! Stand up! The girl looked up with terror in her eyes. Then she struggled to her feet and turned a chalk-white face toward the masked figure that raced toward her. The next moment, the Lone Ranger reined up momentarily beside her. Hopefully, easy now! Oh, we, we can't! Go on! Go on and save yourself! Take my hand! Come on! Betty grasped the Lone Ranger's hand, and with their combined effort, she managed to swing up behind him. There! Now hold on! One, two, three. With a pounding herd only a few yards away, Silver leaped forward with his double load and headed back to the point where Toto was waiting. As the big stallion swept around the edge of the ridge, the thundering herd seemed to brush past his flanks with only inches to spare. Oh, Silver, oh. oh, I, I just can't believe that we got out here. Here, here, let me help you down. You're oh. safe now, Miss Robin. Yes, thanks to you. I'm sure my cousin will want my to leave. My friend Toto will see that you get back to your ranch safely. I have something to do, so I'll leave now. I'll meet your cousin later, Miss Robbins. Come on, Silver! While the cowhands crowded around Miss Rollins, exclaiming over her narrow escape and wondering about the mysterious masked figure... The Lone Ranger rode along the ridge until he reached the spot from which the shots had come. At the time, he had noted the puffs of smoke from the gun. Oh, sir. Oh, easy. Stay down. Oh. I remember the person who fired those shots was behind this cottonwood tree. Maybe I can find some sign that would give me a clue. Footprints here, but not very clear. I wonder if... What's this? Yeah. That's all I need. That night, after the drive was over, the men returned to the Star Ranch. Betty was in the ranch house with her cousin Jack and Tex the foreman. Betty, hereafter you'd better stay at home when we have a cattle drive. You were mighty lucky you weren't killed, I can tell you. Yeah, that's right, Miss Rollins. I'd sure like to get my hands on the local cow hand that did that shooting. I question all of them, but they all deny doing it. I won't have anyone so careless as that working here, Tex. Cousin Betty means a lot to me. And anyone that would risk a life like that can't stay at the Star Ranch. I appreciate that, Jack. But I'm sure it was unintentional on the part of the cowhan who did the shooting. But after all, he had no way of knowing I'd be in the path of those cattle. Oh, but I shiver to think of what would have There's happened some if men I raining can't... up out front, sounds like. I'll open the door. Good evening. What? Oh, uh, you're just the man we want to see, Mr. Owen. The masked man? What are you... Jack, it's the man who saved my life. Oh, do come in. Thanks. Come in, Jeff. Sure. My jeopardy, too. Miss Rollins, this is Sheriff Bell and his deputy. How do you do? How to do, man? Howdy, folks. Say, why have you brought the sheriff here? Just a little business, Mr. Owens. Won't take long. Well, I guess I'll get back to the bunkhouse. Uh, better wait, mister. Now, look at here. I, he I... said to wait a minute, Tex. Oh, why do you pull a gun? What's the meaning of this? Unwrap this and look at it, Miss Rollins. Oh, oh, all right. Why, why, it's a spur. It's one of the spurs I gave to Cousin Jack. I know it by that star. Oh, good. Uh, I uh, lost it the other day. Glad to get it back, mister. But, Jack, you wore your spurs this morning. 
I, I couldn't help but look to see if you would. You had them both on. That's right. He did. The strap is broken on this one. Jack Owens is the man who fired those shots to stampede the cattle. That's a lie. Is it? And why was this spur found under the cottonwood on the spot from which those shots were fired? That doesn't say that I... I... came here this afternoon and picked up one of your boots from the cook. It matches the boot marks under that tree on. But why should Jack... Miss Rollins, will you tell us why you started to ride across when you did? Oh, of course. Tex asked me to. He wanted me to tell the men to swing the cattle left before they reached the river. There ain't any other way they could swing them, ma'am, and they all know it. Exactly. Their timing was perfect. Tex sent you across, and then Owen stampeded the cattle. In other words, Miss Rollins... They attempted to murder you and have it look like an accident. Oh, no. Well, it sure looks like it to me. They didn't count on you getting any help. They planned this thing for several days. No. No, it was Texas' idea. You can't put I... the blame on me. He put me up to it so as he'd get the ranch. He's the one who'd profit. You planned it together, and you can take the consequences together. Sheriff, they'll stand trial for attempted murder. Well, he won't take me in. No, you don't. Oh, oh my leg. Oh, oh. Man alive. That was quick shooting. All right, Deputy. Get Owens out of here. We'll fix up Tex's wound and then take him to town, too. Well, I guess that's all. I'll go now. Adios. Adios. Come on, Owens. Help your man Tex out the bunkhouse. All right. We got more men waiting there. Now, come on, get moving. Oh, Sheriff, I can't believe Jack would do a thing like that. Well, he, he did, miss, and you're mighty lucky you had a friend like that masked man watching over you. Yes. Yes, I am very lucky. He's a very amazing man, Sheriff. Yet I haven't any idea who he is. Well, nobody knows who he really is, Miss Rollins. But believe me, nobody cares just so they can say their friend is the Lone Ranger. This is a product of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Uh-huh.